and okay here we go we're recording hi everybody it's hi. crystal <laughs> the playful trainer welcome to the playful life podcast we are doing things a little bit differently here today as you'll notice we're not in ron harlow's studio we are uh my guest and i are in the comfort of our own home which i don't know i could be used to this i don't know <laughs> So everybody, this is my guest, Debbie Brown. I'm so excited to have her on. And we just decided for safety's sake to do this remotely today. And yeah, so I'm excited to get this new platform you know, going and, and get this conversation started. So um, Debbie and I have known each other a couple of years now, right? And I feel like we really connected for the first time, you know, face to face, sat down and had some coffee the first time I competed for Mrs. Indiana, which was two years ago. And uh, Debbie gave me some great health tips and um, some great things to do for my preparation for pageant. And we've been friends ever since. And I've been loving you know, her journey and what she's been doing to help people out there get healthy. So I thought she'd be a great addition to our podcast. Uh, so Debbie, give us a little bit of background. Um, so. We were, we were kind of chatting yesterday and it was funny because I know your daughters, you have two daughters and you said they're a little bit worried about you right now with all the craziness that's going on. But I know you and I, I agreed with you. I think you're a healthy person and I don't think you're extremely high risk for this coronavirus. But have you always been uh, healthy? Have you always been committed to health? Where did that start and, and how did you maybe get on this like journey to a healthier lifestyle yeah well first of all good morning good morning to everyone um and thank you for having me because um i love sharing um especially in the times that we're in right now um just to know that it's everything's going to be okay i want to say that i firmly believe that um i've always had an interest in health always tried to eat as healthy as i could because i think that's a, a huge uh, factor and how healthy we are the foods that we eat you know staying away from like all the processed stuff whole foods that's the way to go that's how I think um, I recently started um, on the keto lifestyle but when uh, my girls were growing up I had never even heard of the word keto <laughs> so it's like it's it's something that's, back then, right or something similar yeah yeah there was um there was a lot of uh, there was a, oh, I don't even know the word, um, a, I guess maybe a movement to be healthier. But a lot of that was like through the diet pills, which I tried, which were just loaded with caffeine and a bunch of ugly stuff, but they worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I raising the two girls, I was trying to get them as healthy as, as they could. Um, and like I said, a lot of it's just with the, the food that we eat and being mindful um of what we put into our bodies you know being informed i think that's the best decision that you can make with that um we did a lot of exercise we didn't have the technology that we have today so they didn't they didn't have ipads or anything to play on they didn't really watch a lot of tv we were always outside doing stuff going for mm -hmm. walks um i'd take them in the little wagon and we can collect cans and turn those in for money oh, <laughs> so that's just, awesome yeah and the one thing that i've always tried to do is have like a little garden no matter where i was living i always wanted to have um like my fresh herbs and some tomatoes and just a, a garden that we could eat off of in the summer so that always wow. helped i think cool yeah. well they're really lucky to have you as that example in their life that's really truly important i think we also talked about this a little bit that um, that comes from our parents, our grandparents, these generations, and it's important now that even if it hasn't been a part of people's lives, if you're the patriarch or the matriarch of your family, to teach your, you know, generations after you about being healthy and eating healthy and well, whole foods and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I always enjoyed being in the kitchen. I love to cook now, um, but that's where I learned a lot of my history, my, um, my mom, my aunts, my grandmother, my great grandmother. That was a time where we heard s stories and you know um, about distant relatives and how they cooked and what ingredients they used. And back then, nobody measured anything. <laughs> it was like a pinch of this, so that was kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, 
but it's, it just always brings back good memories. And it was very uh, relaxing, you know, to put stuff together, you know, while something's cooking or baking, the aromas, oh my goodness, that fill the room while you're um, cooking. Mm-hmm. And just know that it was really good, um, good food that you were taking into your body. So yeah. I always appreciated that. Yeah, I like the I cooking better than the baking. Yeah. The baking, not so much. I'm not as good at that. Okay. But that yeah, okay. I'm that saying, really yeah, the sweets, <laughs> I'm not a big sweet eater. Uh, I'd rather much do much more do a uh, cooking. Mm-hmm. And then with the big family, I was raised, there was eight of us in the family and being the oldest, I had to help my mom, you know, with all the cooking and stuff every day. So that was, Oh, my, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so true that we associate smells a lot of times with our traditions and uh, memories. And uh, we even talk about that a little bit in the Playful Journal, how, you know, these things are, are what we associate with good memories or bad memories. And, and so there's, there's a lot that goes on there. So what a, a wonderful thing that those are all associated with such good memories for you. And, and that, you know, that's something that you want to keep going with your family. Yes. Yes, especially now that the um, the twins, they're going to be five, ooh, a couple months, doesn't even seem possible, but, and they can learn to do certain things, like if making jello or making thing that, watch me when I make my spaghetti sauce, or just certain things that they love to help. They love to, like, beat the eggs, we're making scrambled eggs, and it's important for them to know, you know, to learn to eat healthy from a young age. I think that's going to take them a long way, too. Because it's so easy to just pull something out and microwave it and boom, you're done. Right. Yeah. I don't know if that's always the healthiest. It's the most convenient a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not knocking anybody that uses the microwave or anything. Um, but I, I choose for myself not to have one because I do enjoy the cooking. Oh. Yeah. I know it's kind of weird. Cool. I don't have one. I will but. say since uh, we got an air fryer last year for our anniversary my parents got us one and I, we were talking the other day like we hardly ever even use our microwave anymore um like we could just basically use the air fryer and that's just to warm up things that like leftovers basically you know and i feel like they turn out so much better in the air fryer we, it just put it in tinfoil pop it in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't realize you could just heat stuff up in that that's interesting but I know a lot of people that have them and really like them. Mm-hmm. And well, it comes it would, out, I guess. Yeah. It's like throwing good. it in the oven, but you don't like heat up your whole house and it doesn't use as much energy. And yeah, I like that. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I love that, you know, you're an example for other people out there. And, you know, we have a, a really broad audience that, that watches The Playful Life. But um, I would say a lot of my clients are women who are um you know a little bit older like 50s 60s 70s and you are a grandmother so i think it's so cool that you are like living healthy and being healthy and uh you do coach people right through kind of that process so when did you get started in that and and what do you love most about helping people with that um i love seeing how it can really change somebody's life. I got started um, about six years ago with It Works. Um, and that's a, it's more than just a health and wellness company. It's about live your best life company. And I tell you, just making changes, because if you don't make any changes, nothing's ever going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's brought me to this journey of helping people get better with their health. Um, like I said, just by making a few changes. And um, it's been six years since I started with this company and the lives that have been changed. And I just want to say I cannot make any medical claims. Absolutely not with this, um, with the products that we have. But it's all about, like I said, being informed about what's going into your body and the things that you can do um, to to be healthier, I guess. Um, I started doing keto probably about two years ago. And before that, I'd really never heard anything about keto. And my daughter, Liz, was telling me, oh, yeah, we got to we gotta try this. So we started out with like a, a five-day fast, which was like crazy. <laughs> um, 
But with the keto diet, intermittent fasting is really important. But never having really done a fast before, I was like, my body was in shock. <laughs> but um, yeah, the the keto lifestyle, I have never really been strict keto. And right now, I honestly got to say that I'm probably low carb, high fat. The one thing I try to stay away from is carbs and sugars because they are so detrimental to the body. They really do a lot of harm. Um, so getting your body into a state of ketosis, which basically is um, you need fuel for your body. So what it does when you go into a state of ketosis, it's, um, it's not, if you don't feed it with the carbs and sugars, it's taking it from your, I guess your fat inside your body, using that for fuel as opposed to all the stuff <laughs> you know when you eat it feeds off of that mm -hmm. so if you don't have that then it has no choice which is a good thing so i'm gonna put my glasses on here a second here um so when all these things are converted when they reach the liver they're converted into something called ketones and that's very important you know that we have those in our body mm -hmm. one thing that i've learned is um Every woman that's pregnant, she automatically goes into ketosis in her third trimester, whether she wants to or not, whether she tries to or not, it automatically happens. And every baby born since the beginning of creation is born into a state of ketosis, which is really good. And the formula for keto is 70% good fats. It's 20% protein and 10% carbs. Um, like I said, I'm not strict to keto, but I do try to follow that. And to know that that formula of 70, 20, 10 is found in mother's milk, that's pretty amazing. So that is. I was really impressed when you told me that. I was like, wow, that's so cool. And it makes so yeah. much sense. It does. It really makes sense. Yeah, because you think back um, 100, 200 years ago, we didn't have a Walgreens or Walmart or anything where you can run to the store to get formula. Mothers had to nurse their children. Um, and if they didn't, they had other women that would nurse them for them. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. milk was so vitally important, mm -hmm. you know, for a baby to have. So yeah, yeah it's a little bit different now, but that really is, is the, but if you can do it, there's some women that can't or they choose not to, and that's okay too. But that formula was like put in place for a right. of time. It's it's amazing. And we talked about too a little bit. Um, so if you if you aren't breastfeeding, um, at least try to keep kids on that like whole food, mostly greens, mostly healthy fats kind of diet. And I know it's very tempting. I mean, sugar tastes good, right? And we were we were to saying how maybe we should start kids on the greens and um when we introduce them to solid foods and stuff like start with the veggies and i'm like you said the kids don't know i mean it's just food to them and as soon as we introduce sugar and fructose and all these things to kids of course that's going to taste better so it's going to be this thing of you know well now they don't want greens whereas if we just kind of continued on that path it'd be a lot easier I would think to raise kids in a little bit more of a whole food lifestyle, right? Right. That's exactly right. Um, because if you introduce the, like the bananas and the pears and the blue, you introduce all those fruits first, by the time they eat the vegetables, you're going to be like, Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're not going to like them. It's easier to start with the vegetables and then go to the, the sweeter things. And the one thing in this, everything that, um, with the keto lifestyle is very, um, you can look it up. Google has all this information. Um, a couple of years ago, keto was like the third most researched word on the internet. And, um, oh, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, oh, about the, the diet with keto. Um, when you change to a ketogenic lifestyle, and it really is more than just a diet too. It's a lifestyle. Right. So it changes your whole metabolic uh, structure. So it's switched from a glucose burning engine to a fat burning um, engine. And what diet can say that? It just mm -hmm. really can't. So it's mm -hmm. very important to start, like you said, the kids um, get an early start with that. And one thing that um, 
you'll find if you do Google like sugars and carbs, when they did, they, and this is research that has been done, they do a scan of the brain. Person that's doing drugs, like say cocaine, it lights up here and there. Sugar, when you take in a, some sugar and they do a scan of the brain, it lights up the whole brain, which is like, whoa. So mm -hmm. sugar is very highly addictive. Mm -hmm. We don't realize it. We don't realize how much sugar is in food, you know? Yes. Um, everything. It's in everything. Yeah. Everything and processed. I've, I've always done is try to read the labels on food. You know, that's always been, and even like salty foods, the amount of sugar in potato chips or Fritos, and I love Fritos. But when you look at the amount of sugar and carbs in that, it's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, people say that they can't do a keto lifestyle because they love their carbs. I'm Italian and I love my pasta. I love carbs. <laughs> but the more you eat it, the more you want it. So if you just kind of take yourself off of it a little bit, you don't crave it as much. Mm -hmm. And so, one thing, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead, Debbie. I was just going to say one other thing about that is with the keto diet, one of the first place you notice a change is like in your belly area, which, mm -hmm. oh, hello, <laughs> mm -hmm. because you're not putting all that stuff in there and that bloat, you don't feel that bloaty feeling, you know? Yes. Yes. So yeah. well, more on that, I've been um, just sort of doing a lot of my own research and reading. And, and one of the books I'm reading right now is called The Bulletproof Diet. And uh, Dave Asbury, a brilliant guy, has a lot of research to back this up. But it's a lot about, you know, not only what sugar does to our bodies and inflammation, but it really is like our ancient way we're wired that like, say, for instance, you eat sugar in the morning, which, right, we've been trained, you eat cereal, oatmeal, fruit, yogurt, all these sugary foods in the morning, but that's really just advertising, trying to tell you what's right for you. It's not really the science. And so when we eat sugar in the morning, we crave sugar all day because that sugar, that glucose, everything that we put in, like tells our gut flora, our gut bacteria to essentially crave sugar. And there's, there's different parts of your brain that you know, really can get wired to be addicted. Like we're talking addicted to that sugar and keep us craving those things all day long. Yes, it really does. Um, when you're asleep, if you sleep for eight or 10 hours, your body goes into a state of fasting automatically. Um, obviously if you're not eating, you're fasting. Um, so when you have breakfast, you break your fast basically. Mm -hmm. So um, for men and women, it's a little bit different. I think men can go a little bit longer, a couple hours longer fasting yep. because they tend to lose weight a little bit faster and different than women do. Yep. Um, but yeah, if we just think about sugar really is not our friend. Um, and some of the things that you might not think about with taking in a lot of sugar is obesity, heart disease, um, high triglycerides, cancer sugar feeds every type of cancer um you become insulin resistant type 2 diabetes is really really bad especially in this country because we have the sad diet the standard american diet yeah um but type 2 diabetes is also one of the most easily curable diseases too because it de it's determined by what we put in our mouth the food that we eat chronic inflammation you had mentioned that um if you have inflammation you have disease. If you have disease, you have inflammation. So taking sugar out of your diet may help, you know, ease the inflammation. Arthritis, um, high blood pressure, depression, um, insomnia, anxiety. And those are just a few things that taking in a lot of sugar can really affect us like this. Mm -hmm. And that's like really scary um, because it's like, sugar does a lot of damage to our bodies that we're probably not even aware of. And the sad thing is like one out of three adults has like type two diabetes. I was shocked to learn that. Yeah. It's like 30, yeah. 30 some percent of Americans that have it. And we were talking about this too, that when we talk about people at risk for say, for instance, the coronavirus, that it's, it's really, a national crisis because we have so many people at high risk in this country due to obesity, 
and diabetes and high cholesterol and high blood pressure and all of these things that make people more susceptible to inflammation. So when our bodies are trying to go, okay, there's, we're inflamed, we're not in a state of homeostasis, your body's going to use all this energy and everything it has to fight that inflammation and make things more normal, make everything run more normally, our, our kidneys, our liver. So reducing that in your body and giving yourself good whole foods just makes you so much more resistant to, to catching illnesses. It does. It's really important to um, not only take care of you know your body with the foods that you eat, but going a little bit further, like doing a probiotic, um, making sure that you, you take that every, your good health starts with your gut, you know, and you just want to make sure that you eat clean and you will feel so much better. That's when you ask me, um, why I'm doing this or how I got started it. When you see somebody that's been on medications and just by making some changes in their lifestyle, and then they're maybe come off a couple medicines or they can get around better and they're just enjoying life. That is, that's what makes me happy <laughs> because life is so short, you know, and you just want to yeah. be able to um, get around and enjoy your family and friends and just do things. You know, um, I have my dream board of things that I want to do. And once this coronavirus is over, there's so many things that I can't wait to get out and do. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's just an amazing feeling when you do get to help um, people. Like I said, we can't, it's not a cure. Um, I'm not saying that by my helping you, I'm going to cure anything. But right. if you can make some small changes, just swap out, you know, little things. Maybe swap out a, if you're drinking a, a coffee that's loaded with cream and sugars and caramel and all this all this stuff maybe switch it out to a, a cleaner coffee you know like maybe um our company i do want to say just came out with a new um skinny brew coffee Ooh. i love you can do that now nice. that's so what's in there oh that that and our keto coffee i do want to say that um our keto coffee has some really good um fats in it it has the good fats it has um a collagen it has the grass-fed butter in it and that's gonna if you drink that first thing in the morning that's gonna continue on your fast that will not break your fast which is really good mm -hmm. our skinny brew coffee and our coffees are made with the green coffee bean first of all which is really amazing um, because it's not roasted and a lot of times when they roast oh. a coffee bean it can deteriorate mm -hmm. shall we say and grow mold <laughs> And Actually, grow mold, a lot yes. Of mold toxins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets very toxic. So um, the Skinny Brew has new tropics in it. It's a new, well, it's not new. It's new to us, the Skinny Brew. But new tropics, if you look up the word new tropics, it means joy, happy. Oh, who doesn't need some happiness in their life right now? <laughs> I think we can all use some happiness. I know so, I'm very unhappy when I don't get my coffee. <laughs> I know. That's what I mean. I got to have it every single morning. But if you're not a fan of caffeine, we also have a keto tea, which is really, really, um, I've been drinking that like right before I go to bed at night for probably two to three weeks now. Sleep like a baby. Don't get up one time. It's like, oh, amazing. There's no caffeine in it. And that goes along with the keto lifestyle too. Yep. Um, and it's just amazing. It's a chai tea. So okay. that is really good. Yeah. Spiced chai, decaffeinated black tea. It does have the MCT oil and the grass-fed butter in it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's know, what I've been doing is MCT oil, which is uh, medium chain triglyceride. For those of you who are like, what is MCT? So, um, it's just a certain type of way they process coconut oil, and uh, I'm like. I've told, I've told this to people like, oh, I put coconut oil in my coffee. And they're like, oh, doesn't that taste weird? It, MCT oil does not have a flavor. It is just extracted from the coconut oil. It's the, the highest quality part, I guess you could say, of that oil. And I, I want to talk more about this idea of good fats because I think um, people maybe were very jaded by the Atkins diet 
back when back when I was a kid, that was that was the buzz, man. Atkins was everywhere and it seemed like people were eating pounds of bacon and all the cheese that they could get their hands on and um and a lot of people were very like discouraging of that, right? So when we talk about good fats, there is a certain type <laughs> right? Certain types of fats that we should be eating. So do you want to talk more about that? Like where can we find good fats? What does that even mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. The Atkins diet is, because a lot of people think keto and Atkins are the same. Atkins is really high protein and you do need protein because the two things that your brain need to function is good fats and protein. Um, and that's why it's so important for like people with dementia, give them them good fats because that's studies have shown that it helps the little receptors through the brain work better when you have the good fats and the um, protein. But yeah, a lot of people think they can't do it because all you can have is bacon or you can't eat anything. There is a whole list of foods with good fats in it. <laughs> um, everything from your, um, your avocado, your olive oils, um, anything with uh, like your, your nuts are a good source of fats and protein. Um, there's a lot of keto um, like shopping lists that they give you. There are tons and tons of food. Um, but you do, I know you had mentioned like your green leafy vegetables. That's so important to get your vegetables in. Um, your protein, chicken, turkey, um, duck, venison, pork, lamb. Obviously, you want to be um, moderate in your habits. You don't want to just scarf down a whole... Um, a whole turkey or whatever <laughs> you know you want to have your plate when you make your meal should have some color to it some green some you know some color reds and there you go with your fruits and vegetables so important you know um i do like buying organic as much as i can because i know for the most part you do do have your research with um with what they how they grow it you want to make sure there's no pesticides and usually if you get something organic then you're pretty good to go with that um and again having your own little um garden just for your like my herbs and my basil and my parsley and my oregano and all my little stuff and you can live in a little place you can still have a little planter so there's ways that you can do that um but yeah there's just so many foods that you can eat on the keto diet and i think that kind of scares people sometimes thinking that you're yeah. gonna starve to death but no exactly <laughs> and healthy fats will keep you satiated. So if you are doing the keto coffee in the morning, for instance, I can intermittent fast because that fills me up, keeps me satiated. So um, when we talk good fats, right, we mean, for instance, grass fed butter is so different than the normal pasteurized butter that comes in the sticks or in the tub, right? It's different. And I, I was not a believer. I was like, yeah, whatever. And then I tried, I bought, Aldi has like a version of the Kerrygold grass-fed butter, just Irish butter guys for, if you're like, where do I find this? Your grocery store has it. I know, I think I've even seen it at CVS. So it comes in a little, like little square. It's usually green. Kerrygold is green, but there's different brands of it. Aldi has a brand that's like $3. And um, it's made from grass-fed cows. So the difference between eating grass-fed meat, grass-fed butter, grass-fed dairy, is that the cows are eating stuff from the earth. They're eating the diet that they were meant to eat and they're getting the nutrients from the ground, from plants, as opposed to eating like literally garbage. Sometimes they feed cows like waste and corn cobs and all these yeah. GMO things. And it's, when you think about it, if you're not eating a healthy animal, how are you supposed to be healthy? Right. And it's, it's the whole factory farming thing just really irks me. If there's one cause that I really want to champion, it's going back to hunting and gathering and eating off the land and just being more connected to earth yes. <laughs> and getting oh, our I nutrients from that. Yep, I couldn't agree more. Um, I actually posted something the other day of two cows. One was from like the 50s or 60s, 
and it was like 950 pounds. It was a good sized cow, but then today's standards, they're like 1500 pounds and they're bloated and big. And I'm like, that cow doesn't even look healthy. It's big and fat because it's a big cow, but it doesn't mm -hmm. look healthy because mm -hmm. of all the hormones and steroids. And like you said, corn and just all this other stuff that they feed cows, but the cows back then they had the grass to graze in and they ate that. And I think the milk was probably better now <clears throat> because when you put all that stuff into a cow and then we feed off the milk and the meat, what is that doing to our bodies? That cannot be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you are what you eat, right? And we see yes. people growing as we see our cows growing. <laughs> and it's not, it's not a coincidence. No, it's not. <laughs> So it's like, we always say, well, sometimes you just have to break up with your food, <laughs> you know, because a moment of pleasure, eating something, a moment on the lips can be forever on your hips. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so yeah, if you want to change your destiny, sometimes it's just changing your diet. Um, and what helps is sometimes we can't do it by ourselves. That's why I love like doing Zooms with my team, doing, doing um, getting together with friends for coffee and letting them know because sometimes you want to make a change and you just don't know how to make a change um but the first step it's just taking that first step just saying i want to change something something has to change you know yeah. especially if you're dealing with severe health issues you know and you're just tired you know the um the pharmaceutical industry um promotes a lot of pills but why not do it the safe and natural way if you can i'm not saying that you should not take any medicine or anything but it's gotten to the point where every other day there's a new drug out, you know, and you take that for something, then the side effects lead you to another drug. Then you got to take it for that. And then before you know it, you're on five, 10 drugs a day to this, your, your main thing hasn't really been fixed. Right. <laughs> you know, your main issue has not been fixed. Now you're dealing with all these other things. So yeah, um, I was recently speaking with um, a doctor the other day and I was telling him about, you know, like the keto lifestyle kind of, the things that I was doing. And he was really, he was on board with that because not a lot of doctors are. And I asked him, I said, why don't doctors address more of the food that we put into our bodies? And he said, he does personally. Um, but a lot of that pharmaceutical industry, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier for people to pop a pill mm -hmm. than to make some changes. So that's right. why I feel called to do this. Um, it's not easy. You know, it can be hard sometimes, but life is hard. Life, but you always have a choice. That's why I always tell people, you have a choice to make changes. And if you don't right. change something, then nothing's ever going to change. So um, I'm here to help you. I'm here to coach you. I'm here to support you because it is important. We can't do this by ourselves. It's just, it's just not as much fun by ourselves. That's so you true. Know, you start so out. True. Yeah. And I know like at the beginning of the year, everybody's got all these great dreams about losing weight, going to the gym, doing all this stuff. And then two weeks later, half the people have already lost their, their willpower and they're like, okay. <laughs> your so, yeah, it's, your it why is, and your goal has to be so much further beyond whatever, you know, I, I feel like people put these like very superficial goals out there. Like I want to lose weight. Well, how much weight? What, why? Is there right. a, a function that you're going on, a vacation that you want to do? Do your joints hurt? Do you like, what is the point? Because if you don't have a greater goal, there's nothing that's going to keep you going. That, that's right. That is so true. Um, we always say, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not big enough. You know, when I ask people, well, why do you want to do this? Or why do you want to try the keto diet? Or why do you want to try some of the products? Well, I want to lose weight. Well, why? Well, um, you just got to dig deeper layer after layer after layer. Well, because it's better for my children. Well, why? So I can get on the floor and play with them. Well, why? Because they're little and I want them to remember. Well, why? Because I had that as a child and I want my children. Well, why? Because, you know, yeah. so you dig, you're like, wow, this is for my kids. I'm really you know, I'm doing it for myself because I want to be around a long time and have fun with them and show them things. So it's not just, well, I just want to lose weight. Well, why? So I, right. I agree with that. Just, and sometimes it's like, 
I, I've asked uh, this one girl, I remember, and she's like, and she was telling me, and then by the end, she was crying. I'm like, there you go. Now I can help you. <laughs> She's like, oh, I didn't realize why I really wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, we start out thinking we're going to do it for ourselves. Yeah, but why? Mm -hmm. and why? And when you make those changes, people, people are always watching. They want to see, how are you doing that? What are you doing? Can I do that? You know, and the keto diet is something that anybody can do. It's, mm -hmm. it's very simple. Um, it's just eating healthy, eating good whole foods. I think that's the point of it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So a uh, couple things. What what's something that you could suggest our viewers could start today doing if they want to try this kind of lifestyle? Um well one of the first things um since we are all at home we all probably have access to water. So one of the things is drink make sure you're getting your um enough water in your body. You want to make sure that you're hydrated. Very important. Um, because especially with this coronavirus or with anything, if your, um, like your mucous membranes, if your insides are dry, you have a better chance of catching things. It's going to break down your immune system faster. But if everything's hydrated, everything's running, it's harder to catch something that's running than something that's just right there. <laughs> So I would say start with um, drinking your water and a probiotic. I think that that's very important. If you're not on um, a probiotic, you're, um, I know a lot of people take supplements, but a lot of supplements, you got to really do your due diligence and watch what you're taking into your body. Um, and then just, like I said, switching out some foods instead of reaching for something that's fried, try something for instead of frying your chicken, maybe grill your chicken, um, have that salad, go back to what I was talking about, like with um, your whole foods, have your, your vegetables and your uh, fruits, but especially those vegetables, that's where you're going to get a lot of your vitamins and minerals. Um, I know there's things that you can take like your, your vitamin C. I like to do the pure ascorbic acid which is vitamin C, but it's not like in a pill with all the sugars and all the other stuff when they make it, you know? Um, and then just making little switches, maybe swap out one thing a day. Um, and if anybody has any questions, you know, they can feel free to say, Hey, if I have this issue, what's, what's something that you could suggest? Or, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to cut out everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to cut out all your sweets. Will it help you when you do? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but you don't, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to. But if you do want to see some results and see some changes in your life, um, especially like with the, the sugar, knowing that that adds, uh, fuels depression, we don't need that in our life right now. You know, we just, we just don't need that. <laughs> um, so yeah, just little, little things we can do each and every day. Yeah. Awesome. And I know we mentioned this too, when we were talking before, but it's that idea of, oh, you know, the, the second we give something up or the second we tell our brains, you can't have this, that's all we want. So <laughs> it's important to remember that you got to take it one day at a time. And it's not like you're never going to eat pasta again, or you're never going to eat cake again. Right. But it's about saying, well, on my birthday, I'm going to have a piece of cake. Or when I go out to dinner at this restaurant that I go to twice a year, I'm going to have the pasta or whatever. It's not all or nothing. And I think people get that mindset, well, I'm going to fail at this. And they just, they disqualify themselves before they even start. Right. I think you're right. Um, I do allow myself some cheat days, but you're going to know that you're not going to do this perfectly anyways. There may be times where you're out and you do have that um, piece of cake that dessert or whatever and that's okay then the next day you just start over again like a little baby learning to walk when he falls he doesn't say oh I felt I can never get up again oh gets back up and he tries it again <laughs> you know so it's continually trying just continually getting up after you fall fall off the wagon get right back on it you know everybody does it nobody does this perfectly and that's okay you have to know that that's okay you will fail sometimes yeah. Um, 
and just know that you're not alone because everybody does. <laughs> right. But the important thing is just keep on going. You know, you're, you're going to be successful if you just don't quit and give up. You just do it. Um, and once you start to feel better, you're like, wow, I don't really want that because I'm feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the first times that when we were talking right before you did your Mrs. Indiana pageant, um, you put one of our body wraps on. And how was that? Was that like amazing? And yeah, I loved it. it. Yeah. That's what our company started with. And I love it. And who doesn't want to be, have their, especially with us women, we wrap our bellies. Who doesn't want to be, have their skin tight and toned and firmed in 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. Really? It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, when you see, when you start to see changes in yourself, you make the choice. Do I really want that? Yeah, I do. But oh, do I want to feel better and look better? Yeah. So your mind shift changes a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and that's important too. You know, you can, you can like fool your, fool yourself a little bit, but you really don't want to do that. Especially when you start feeling better and then go back and try to eat like you did before. Cause people are like, well, if I come off the keto diet, I'm going to lose weight. Yeah, absolutely. You will. When you go back to eating junk food, you're probably going to feel terrible again. You know, you whiten your teeth. Stop doing that and keep drinking black coffee and red wine. Your teeth are not going to be as white again. You're right. If you go to the gym and you feel good and then you stop going, you're not going to. Yeah, you're right. When you do something that's good for yourself and then you stop doing it. Yeah, you're going to go back to your old ways, your old habits. You know, so you just have to make the decision of what you want to do. Right. And when you decide that, then I would be glad to help you. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So on that note, Debbie, how can people find you? I'll make sure I link this, of course, on the YouTube link and on our Facebook, how they can get a hold of you. Okay. I do have a Facebook and an Instagram page. Um, right now, because everybody's working from home, um, I have a replicated website so that um, it's Debbie Brown dot it works from home.com because that's what I'm doing now is working from home and twice a day, noon and eight o'clock Eastern time, we're doing presentations about our company and about the business because it's so uncertain when people are going to be going back to work. I feel led to present this opportunity to people where they can work from home um, and maybe just share the products and make a little bit of extra cash like I do. Um, so yeah, my, my regular website is wbrapping.itworks.com. Okay. <laughs> so I can put both of those. Um, and it's just I'm very easy to find on Facebook and Instagram. And once this craziness is over, I love doing my vendor events, love doing that. So you can always find me out at like a lot of the local um, hangouts and stuff, coffee shops. And just if you want to do a one-on-one um, -on -one or have a little get together with your, with your friends, we can, do the wrap, which I love doing wrap parties. Oh, uh, we can sample all of our products. A lot of our keto products are um, our new greens. Oh, the super reds, so good for your immune system. There's just so much hydrate, um, all the things that you need to keep yourself health, self healthy. And I'm just, I, I just love it. Just, it just makes me happy when I get to share this and people are like, oh. You're a keto coffee company. You're a coffee company. I thought you were ramps. And it's so funny because the people that I talked to originally six years ago, we just had a few products. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. It was a wrap company. And, but now it's like when I talk to people about, people about the coffees and the teas and the healthy stuff, like, oh, I thought you were a wrap company. So we've expanded and we've actually have a beauty line now. Um, and the, the neck cream, oh, I guess I love it. <laughs> But yeah, so if you're stuck at home and you want to try some of these beauty products, amazing. I love all our stuff is, um, is, is natural. There's no junk or fillers or any of that stuff in our products. Um, some of our stuff, a lot of our stuff is keto friendly, vegan. Um, so it's really good. There's a lot of information. So I would love to talk to people, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. If you have any questions, they can, you know, check in here on the um on the zoom when you re when you um i know it's recording but when you put it out there <laughs> yeah because also people have questions because it's just uncertain times and yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. Guys, if you're watching and you're interested in any of this stuff, I would strongly suggest reaching out to Debbie personally. I mean, go to her website, check it out if you want, but it's always best to get the information from her directly because you might not need one thing, but she could be like, oh, I, I think you would, you know, probably benefit from this thing over here. So it's always best to just talk to somebody who knows the products, knows the lifestyle and can kind of guide you in the right direction and, and give you that consultation. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's not just adding um, years to our life. It's adding life to our years. I think that's so important. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's going to be our quote. Adding life to our <laughs> years. Ah, oh, it's so yeah. good. So good. Yeah, and well, that's the playful you. life. That is the playful it life, is. right? That's, that's the message I bring. And that's why I knew you'd be such a great guest on here because you're out there doing it and you're living your best life and leading by example. And that's, that's really important. So Thank you so much, Debbie, for being oh, on here. You. I'm so glad we got to connect and so yes. happy to see what you're doing out there. So we're going to make it through this and <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I, when I first met you, you just had the personality. I just love it. You're so kind and the way that you help people and the um, goals you set for yourself and the dreams that you have and yeah italy yeah <laughs> when you told me that you know you had been in italy and that maybe your dream is to move there one day that's yes. amazing so i just want to encourage everybody to dream big dream bigger and just know that you're not alone that's all and thank yeah. you again for having me on this was Absolutely, so exciting Debbie. <laughs> yeah and eventually when we're back in the studio we can have you back in and give you the full experience <laughs> i know <laughs> That's okay. When life hands you lemon, you make lemonade. That's you right, make enough right. for everybody. I gotta keep it going. <laughs> yes. I love yes. That. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. This has been the Playful Podcast. You can catch us here on Ron Harlow Media on the Playful Trainer Facebook page and the Playful Trainers uh, YouTube page. I've got lots of live workouts that I'm posting for you guys to keep up with me. I'm working out at home. My gym is closed. So uh, I would love to see you guys uh, go on there and, and do the workouts with me and stay healthy, stay playful, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>